So method of reloading in Rust doesn't really work, right? We can have two methods with the same name, even if their function signature is not necessarily the same. Right in here, we have a my method and in another my method that takes an i32. But as you can see, as Visual Studio code is already spoiling for us, this doesn't really work. And if you run this, you'll see that uh, previous definition of value my method here. So this is not okay. But there is sort of one way to do it, kind of. And that's done through traits. So take this, for example, we have trait A and trait B. Both of them require an implementation for a method called, well, method. Then we have a my struct, which implements both these traits, you know, this is A, this is B for each of the implementations of the method. And then we have my struct, which in itself also implements method. Now note, all of these, um, methods uh, take in self. So when we call my instruct a method, what are we calling? It's not Ghostbusters. And in fact, if we run this, you'll see we get my struct. Now, how do we call it so that it actually refers to the implementation trait A or trait B? The way to do that is the other way to call something that takes self. That's namely, you say A method and you pass it in directly, my struct, or equally for B, we can say B method, and you pass in again, directly my struct. Now running this, you'll see we get my struct A and B. So there you go, method of reloading, kind of. Now, just in case you're curious and for completeness, what do you think would happen if we just created my struct and we call method, but my struct in itself didn't implement method? Well, in this case, VS Code is kind of spoiling it again, but if we run it, you'll see that, surprise, surprise, we get an error saying that there is multiple applicable items in scope. So saying the multiple method found, and there's multiple candidates that the compiler so uh, also nicely tells us uh, we could use. Now, what if method doesn't take in self? Well, first of all, we'll then have to call it with something that looks somewhat like this, right? Might struct because we don't have a specific self. We don't have an instance of my struct to associate method to. But as VS Code is once again spoiling for us, this is not the way. This will be ambiguous because, you know, my struct method could be calling A, the implementation in A, or the implementation in B. So this calls for a turbo fish. Uh, turbo fish is a syntax pattern that looks somewhat like a fish, like this or like this. And we use a turbo fish because we'll say my struct, and in here we'll specify that it's as A, or in the other case, as B. Now running it, we'll see that we'll get, hopefully, soon enough, this is A and this is B. Now, considering we're talking about trades, I figured I'll add a little bit of a bonus um, item to this video. And that's the fact that you can have default types with generics in traits. So take this for an example. We have a trait A, which has a generic uh, T, but it does have a default type of an I32. And you see, we have a method T here. Now, when you have a my struct that implements A, if we don't specify anything for A, it just uses, you know, your I32 because that's the default type. But we can also specify A F64, and that alters the method to have F64s. And there you go. Then you can call it with uh, just like this. So if you run this, we'll see that because we were doing you know, inside of our turbo fish, we say as a, this calls as a, but this is as a F64. And there you go. And that's it for today. Shorter video, but I just felt like there were some things about traits that I wanted to share. So um, yeah, that'll be it for me, but I'll see you next time. Bye bye.